we ended yesterday's lesson by examining some angle relationships. Uh, for instance, if two angles add up to 180 degrees, we found that they're supplementary. We found that um, if two lines intersect, that the angles that are across from each other are called vertical angles and those angles are equal. And remember we discussed how uh, that is because of a supplementary angle pairs. So today we're going to look at a special uh, type of scenario where we have a line that is intersecting two parallel lines. Later on in geometry, you're going to use today's uh, properties that we're going to learn about parallel lines uh, to prove that two lines are, in fact, parallel. So just a few quick definitions to start. You need to write these in your notes. Parallel lines, I'm sure you know this, are two lines in a plane that never meet. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form 90 degree angles. This next one is a little bit uh, new. Uh, transversal. Okay. Oh, by the way, down here, uh, parallel. Make sure you know those two symbols. You need to use them throughout the, uh, the course of the chapter. A transversal is the line that intersects with two or more other lines. And when this happens, when I have a transversal that intersects two parallel lines, we have some interesting things happen with our angles. Um, the whole kind of theme of the first half of the chapter here is how do we find missing angle measures. So let's take a look at this uh, diagram down here. We have uh, which angles seem to be congruent. Well, if you notice, if you look closely, there are sets of acute angles and sets of obtuse angles. We have two and four. Now, we know that those are equal because they're vertical angles. We know they're congruent with each other. They're across from each other. We have the transversal C intersecting line A. Um, so we know two and four must be congruent, must be equal because they're vertical. We also know that 6 and 8, my other two acute angles, are congruent because they are vertical angles. Make sure you're writing all this stuff down. So we have angles 2, 4, and then if you look closely, it looks like 6 and 8 are also congruent to angles uh, 2 and 4. Take a look at the obtuse angles. 1 and 3 are vertical, so we know those are congruent with each other. We also know 5 and 7 are congruent. And if you look closely, it looks like, it looks like, we're going to prove this, but it looks like those are congruent. Uh, we can't just go by looks, by the way. We have to actually be able to prove it. So let's talk about how we actually go about proving this. Okay, we have a figure here. We have a, the, the upper left angle there is 124 degrees. Um, let's find the measures of angles 1 through 7. If you notice, angle 1 and 124 form this straight line L. That tells me right away that it equals 180 degrees, because otherwise, it's because they form a straight line. If I subtract 124 from my little equation here, I find that angle 1 is 56, because 56 plus 124 is 180. They are supplementary angles. See how we use this angle relationship to, to find missing angle measures. So I know angle 1 is 56. Now I know a couple of other angles, too. I could say that angle 1 and 3 are supplementary because they form a straight line or I can look at angle 1 and angle 2 those are vertical so I have a couple different options for how to find these 2 and 3 are supplementary um, but I know the easy one here is angle 1 and angle 2 are equal because they're vertical I also know angle 3 is 124 degrees because it's vertical with the uh, 124 degree angle there as well so I'm using so far I've only used vertical and supplementary now and remember, there's more than one way to get at this, okay? So angle 3, I could also say is supplementary with angle 1 or supplementary with angle 2. So I could do that, uh, subtract 180, subtract uh, 56 from 180. The problem is, how do I get down to this group of angles down here? How do I go from the top group uh, of four angles to the bottom group of four angles to show that those are actually equal? We have three property, properties that are going to help us do that. Um, and they are properties when we have a line intersecting two parallel lines, a transversal. The first one uh, is called alternate interior angles. Notice these angles are both inside the two parallel lines. That's why they're interior. They're called alternate because they're on alternating sides of the transversal. Alternate means on one side and then the other, other side. So notice uh, in our diagram, 3 and 4. 3 is to the, to the right of the transversal, 4 is to the left, and they're both inside, so they're alternate on, on alternating sides of the, of the transversal, 
and their inside, their interior, so we know 3 and 4 are equal. We also know 2 and 5 are alternate interior. They're both inside the parallel lines on either side of the transversal. So I know 2 equals 5, 3 equals 4. So 4 is 124 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. 5 is 56. Now from there, I could use supplementary to get angles 6 and 7 or vertical angles to get 6 and 7. Let's look at another uh, property, though, alternate exterior. You notice here, exterior is outside the parallel lines. That's what exterior means, if you think about it in real life. And if you'll notice, angle 7 and angle 124 are alternate exterior, so they equal each other. Notice angle 7 is to the right of the transversal, 124 is to the left, and they're outside. Angle 6 and angle 1 are alternate exterior, because they are both outside the parallel lines on either side of the transversal. Last one, uh, basically, okay, just showing you the alternate exterior there. We found all the angles now, but there's one more tool we could have used and we will use. This one is, uh, basically it's like matching them up. Notice how the, the pink angle down in the bottom right, those match up. Because uh, they're both above the parallel line to the right of the transversal. The purples match up. Angle 3 and angle 7 match because they're below the parallel line and to the right of the transversal. They're in the same spot in their group of four angles. They match up. Look at uh, 124 and angle 4. They're both above the parallel line. Notice they're both 124 degrees, they're both equal. They're above the parallel line and to the left of this transversal. So above to the left, above to the left. They match up in their positioning. The last one would be below the parallel line to the left of the transversal. That would be angle 2 and angle 6, below and to the left. These groupings, these pairings, are what we call corresponding angles. Remember corresponding, we've heard this word before, it means matching. Corresponding angles, here's how it works. Okay, notice uh, if you take a look at your corresponding angles here, angle 2 matches with 6 because they're above and to the right of the transversal. Angle 4 and angle 8, below the parallel lines to the right of the transversal. Angle 1 and angle 5, above the parallel to the left of the transversal. And 3 and 7 are below and to the left of the transversal. Watch what happens when I take this top group of 4 when I set it on the bottom group before, notice how this really shows how they match up. So if I could take my transversal and cut it in half and take the top group of four angles and lay it on the bottom group of four, they match up. So taking a look, uh, what, I want you, what I want us to do right now is to practice using all these tools we've learned. If I know angle one is 64 degrees, I want to find all the other angles. So there's a number of ways I can go right now. I know angle 1 equals angle 3 because they are corresponding angles. Notice how now our parallel lines are, are up and down. So they're to, they're to the left of the parallel lines and above the transversal. So if angle 1 is 64, then angle 3 is 64. So I just filled in that one bit of information. Now I've got an angle on my top group, or on my left group, an angle on my right group. So I can go angle 3 and angle 8 are equal because they are vertical angles. You might need to be pausing the video to write all this stuff down. This is the process you're going to go through uh, to find all these missing angles. Uh, so make sure you're prepared to do that. So um, we're going to do this tomorrow as well. We're going to practice this some more and on your uh, homework tonight. So now I know uh, angle 8 is 64, angle 3 is 64. I could get angle 6. Those are corresponding. Angle 6 and angle 8 are corresponding. Angle 6 is vertical with angle 1. Angle 3 and angle 6 are congruent with each other. Think about the, don't forget about alternate interior angles. So these are alternate interior angles. Um, you could have done angle 1 and angle 8 are alternate exterior angles. They're both outside the parallel lines on either side of the transversal. Okay, so I have all my acute angles figured out. Let's go ahead and do the obtuse angles. For this, I'm going to have to use supplementary angles. Notice angle 1 and angle 2 form this straight line. They form the transversal when I put those two angles together. So angle 1 and angle 2, I know, 
the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 has to equal 180 degrees. I could do the same thing for our angle 5 plus angle 6, angle 3 plus angle 4, angle 7 plus angle 8, and actually angle 2 plus angle 6. Um, so either way, I've got a little equation I can set up here. Angle 1 is 64 degrees plus the measure of angle 2. So whatever angle 2 is, I can take away the 64 degrees from the 180, and I end up with the measure of angle 2 equals uh, 116 degrees. And now I've got that. Now I can continue to do supplementary angles. Or I can say 2 and 5 are vertical. 2 and 4 are corresponding. Uh, let's go with that one. Let's say angle 2 is corresponding with angle 4. And then... I'm sorry, not that should say. Okay, yeah, two and five are vertical. We mentioned that one. And then I could say angle five and angle four are alternate exterior if I wanted to. They're both outside the parallel lines. Angle five is below the transversal, angle four is above. And then I only have one left. I only have angle 7. Angle 7, I have a lot of different options. It's alternate interior with angle 2. It's vertical with angle 7. It's corresponding with angle 5. Take your pick. You have lots of different ways you can get there. I'm going to use angle 4 and angle 7 are vertical angles. You see there's lots of, uh, lots of different directions we can go here for how we find these missing angles lots of different tools we can use. Let's go ahead and get a list going here of what those tools are. You should write these down. We're up to six right now. The first one is complementary angles. If I form a right angle, 90 degrees, I know that I can, I can use that to figure out a missing angle of the, if those two angles are right angles. Supplementary, if I have two angles that form a straight line, I know I can use the fact that they equal 180 degrees to find a missing angle. Vertical angles are very easy. Uh, if they have two lines intersecting, the ones across from each other are equal. Uh, the next one, uh, let's see, corresponding angles will be the next one here. This only works if you have uh, parallel lines with a transversal so that they, you can match up the, the one set with the other set. Same thing for alternate interior and alternate exterior. Alternate interior and alternate exterior and corresponding. The 4, 5, and 6 on this list only works work if you have uh, parallel lines. So um, what we're going to do tomorrow is this. When you come in, I'm going to give you a set of eight angles, um, and you're going to have to tell me what each measurement is and how you found it. Uh, you're also going to have to tell me uh, uh, in your homework tonight, you're going to have to identify some of these different relationships. Uh, it's going to come down to a little bit of memorizing, a lot of practice, and then tomorrow I'll give you a, uh, a very challenging problem to do once you're done with your entrance activity.